Hi there. I am so happy you chose to worship God with us here at the Cloverdale Seventh-day Adventist Church. I invite you to allow the presence of God to fill you up. Also, if you are desiring to support the cause of Christ uh, through your kind generosity, or maybe you have some questions, please feel free to visit our website at uh, cloverdale.org. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with all of you. And in case you close your Bibles, I invite you to open them again to Genesis 12 and just leave them open. We're going to spend some time in the Word. Review a story that's familiar to many and perhaps discover a few new insights as we do so. You know, a while back, this was uh, December 2021, so not too long ago, I was reading online and, you know, in 2020, there's a whole lot of articles and things about burnout. And I was just reading up on it and trying to figure this out. And, and there was this one, I don't even know if it's an article, it's, it's like a, a blog post, a short one, but it was really interesting. And I have a link to the whole thing on my blog, prmarlin.com. So afterwards, I don't have it up now because I don't want you to get distracted. But after I'm done preaching, it's going to be up. And there's links and notes to everything I'll be sharing here. Um, but there is this interesting line in that post that said, most of us aren't actually burned out. It said, we're bored. We're not overburdened. We're under-challenged. Our potential isn't being incinerated. It's going untapped. That made me wonder, is this person on to something or is he just way out there? Because I know there's people in different situations and going through different things. But I was thinking about it. 2020 was a year where we spent a lot of time indoors, closed off and separated from one another. And then 2021 didn't get a whole lot better. So could it be just fatigue from, you know, this routine of being indoors in front of a screen the whole time? Could he be on to something? Could it be that I'm not overburdened, I'm just under-challenged? Could it be that I'm bored because my potential is going untapped? Could it be that the answer is not more relaxation, but rather a meaningful challenge. I say this because, you know, just last Sabbath, we had our ministries fair, and it was amazing. I was blown away by the creativity of our ministry leaders. Pastor Jason did an amazing job helping organize, and you guys did great with the booths and everything. And, you know, it's amazing to see at once all the different ministries we have going on. Last Sunday, I had the privilege of being involved with the car ministry. You see, I received a, a text message from someone who's not even a member of our church, but they knew about this ministry. And, and a friend of a friend knew this person who was an immigrant in this country, didn't really speak English fluently, had been going through a rough time, had just gone through a divorce, had had a death in the family, and then their car broke down. And this person is just like, everything is going wrong in their life. Is there anything that Cloverdale Church can do for this person? And I went there to talk with the person. And we went over to uh, the Cars Ministries. And, and I'm so grateful for the men in this church who know about cars because I don't. And they put the car up and they're looking under there and talking. And I'm trying to translate and listening to this person's life story. And, and in the end, I was just so happy to be part of a church that can take someone with real needs and meet those needs to the best of our abilities. And that person was texting me throughout the week, just thanking me, just randomly, you know, saying it worked and my car passes the emissions test and this thing that used to be a problem is no longer a problem. Whatever you guys did, it helped and thank you so much. I had gone through three mechanics, they couldn't figure it out and all of this. And I was just thinking, praise the Lord. I didn't even do anything. I was there just talking to her, you know. So, so thank you for the Cars Ministries, those of you who are involved in it, those of you who donate to it. And I was just thinking, what if this 
is what we need more of. People stepping out of their comfort zone, giving up their Sundays. I mean, people were already busy all week, but then they take a Sunday and say, this Sunday, I'm just going to help people who are in need. And the same goes for the children's ministries, as I mentioned earlier. If you want an adventure, work with children. It'll challenge you. They'll push all of your buttons, but you will grow as a person. And there's so many people that I have had the privilege of baptizing that it all started with Sabbath school. It started with grandma. It started with the aunt or someone just sharing a story of Jesus. Some children, the first time they hear, it's around Christmas times from the grandparents. And then when they come to church, they hear a little bit more. It's all of us working together. But I don't want you to think of it as a burden. Oh, it's this thing I have to do for my church because otherwise the pastor's going to make me feel guilty. No. <laughs> what if this is a call to an adventure? An opportunity for you to grow, an opportunity for you to be challenged by something meaningful for the benefit of somebody else. What is God calling you to do? We're going to look at a story. We're going to look at the story of Abraham. But as we're looking through the story, I want you to think about your own life and start praying, what is God calling me to do? What's the adventure? And I know some of you have already signed up for different ministries. I know many of you here are, are ministry leaders and you're already involved. And if you're not, it's not too late. You can still get involved. But start thinking, even with the ministry that's already established, what can we do? What is the adventure that God is calling us? Not, you know, uh, Pastor, I'll sign up once I, I rest enough, once I relax enough. I'm just, I'm feeling burned out. I'm feeling, well, what if it's just from going through these tasks that you do every day and what you need really is a change of pace, a new challenge, something meaningful. You start thinking about it and praying about it. As a matter of fact, let's pray right now, Heavenly Father, as we get ready to study the Bible. Lord, we understand that spiritual things are spiritually discerned, so we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us. Speak to us through your word, and as we spend time in the Bible, I pray that you would teach us lessons that you want us to learn. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. What if what you need is an adventure? Genesis chapter 12, we have a famous call to adventure. This is when God calls Abram. I hope you have your Bibles and you open them there. I know many of you are familiar with the story, but humor me. Let's look through the text because I find that every time I look through the biblical text, there's something that God wants to impress in my heart because even though the text is the same, I am not the same. As we go through different things, there's different things that jump out at us from the Bible. I know there's a Sabbath school that meets in here, and these, this Sabbath school is full of experts in Genesis, so I'm glad you guys are here to help me out as we go through this, as we go through this story. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I... Talk to me. That I will show you. Thank you. You're awake. This is wonderful. So God is saying, hey, I have an adventure for you. This is going to be great. Okay, God, what is it? Okay, first step, leave behind your social security. Now we associate this with a government plan. But, but think about this with me. In many parts of the world, the government doesn't take care of the people. It's their family that takes care of them. Your children are your social security. Your, your family members are your social security. When something goes wrong, you get sick. The investment didn't work out. The crops failed. You know who's there for you? Family. God is saying, leave behind your social security. The, the people who are there for you, in case something goes wrong, leave all that behind. Uh, okay. You're going to go somewhere awesome. Okay, great. Where is it? You're going to find out. Can you tell me now so I can decide, you know, properly say yes or no to this question? No, trust me, it's going to be great. So where? You find out. And some people, because of this, because God does not give you the whole plan with all the details and the map and the itinerary, anybody here travel like that? I blessed a woman that has that gift. 
when we go somewhere she has the itinerary the times where we're going to stop what we're going to do it's amazing i just drive you know <laughs> and and then before i got married i had a friend one of my very best friends and he's like that we're going somewhere he's already looking up the itinerary he's back in the day there was no gps right you get the the atlas and he's highlighting the route we're gonna go and so we want that from god and when god says no just trust me it's gonna be great we're like well i need more information first but is it fair to require that of god when we're willing to take that step in so many areas of our life for example, if anybody here is in college, when you start your major, you have no idea how it's going to go. Or even if you'll be able to find a job in the end. And even worse, if the job will be worth whatever you're going into debt for to get the degree. You, it's an adventure, right? You start and you hope for the best. And then same thing with a career. So many people, I have a lot of friends that graduated, started their career and realized it's not what they wanted. And they're doing something completely unrelated to their degree now. But it's part of the adventure. If we're willing to take those steps in career, in our education, in relationships, why not take that step by faith when God is calling us? And maybe you have, maybe what happens is you feel this burden for a problem you see this problem you notice the problem you says somebody should do something and you start thinking maybe this would be able to help maybe this would you know help people in this situation maybe and if i could get a few more what if this is god calling you for this adventure but you're afraid because you already feel tired you already feel exhausted every morning you get up and it's hard to get out of bed and you go to bed and it's hard to fall asleep what if what you need is a challenge something to be passionate about excited about it's not because you have all the free time in the world it's not because you're full of energy and have nothing to do it's because you need something meaningful to apply yourself to something that will challenge you for the benefit of somebody else let me tell you those of you who are ministry leaders those of you who signed up for ministries last week those of you who are here for the first time and now you're getting excited about ministry let me tell you ahead of time it's not going to be easy but adventures are not meant to be easy. They're meant to be worth it. So let's get back to the story. God is calling him, leave behind all of these things. But there is promises too. It's not just about what you leave behind. Following God is not just about things that you don't do. It's not just about the old you that stays behind. There's a lot of exciting things ahead that God has for you. Verse 2 says, I will make you what? A great nation. Thank you. Oh, that was so much better. So if you read chapter 11, especially verse 30, you're going to find out that Abram, I'm going to refer to him as Abraham because his name is going to be changed later. Right now it's Abram and Sarai. God would change their names to Abraham and Sarah. So I'm just going to refer to them by their name later on. So Sarah was barren and had no child. No, no. So hear me out. What if? What if there is this thing that you wish you had, you're longing for, whether it's, it's, a, it's a career thing, it's an impact thing, a, a meaning thing in, in your life that you're searching and you're longing for and you've been praying to God for it. I mean, Abraham and Sarah have been praying for a child, but she can't have children. God says, go on this adventure and let me tell you, miracles will begin to take place. Things are going to change. And as a part of that, you're going to get this thing you really want. But you have to first start the adventure trust me in this take this first step and you will be able to if anybody here remembers starting to swim right it's scary it's hard you think i'm gonna die but you trust whoever is teaching you if anybody is you know had a similar experience to me my teacher was my dad and his method was the one that was used for him and he would just throw me in the water and say, kick your feet. No, not like that. And picks me up like this, you know. And he throws me in the water again. And then I'm trying. And that was my learning experience, you know. And then I learned, you know. I, it turns out, you know, I figured it out as I, as I got older. But what if God is saying, hey, this thing that you want to do, you want to be able to swim? Well, it starts with you jumping in the water. You want to be able to find like this exciting, meaningful thing where you're having a positive impact in the lives of others? It starts with you trying. And let me tell you, you're going to make some mistakes. And I've made my fair share. 
And let me tell you ahead of time, full transparency, I, I have intentions of making many more mistakes as I'm figuring things out. I promise to never make a mistake on purpose. And I promise to not err in the side of not doing anything. I came here to try things. And we're going to do this together. And we're going to make mistakes. And we're going to learn from those mistakes. And things are going to get better. And I give you permission to make mistakes as long as you're aiming for something worthwhile. Try new things. We're still figuring things out, and, and if you've been coming here for a while, you know this. We've got the building renovated, and it looks great, but there's still things that we're figuring out, and we're getting better, and, and that's how we improve. We try. And you, you take that first step, and, they, and God is saying to Abraham, hey, I'm going to make you a great nation, and I will bless you. You see, that's the amazing thing. When God calls us to adventure, he says, I'm going to take care of you. But Lord, I don't understand all the steps. He says, it's okay. It's going to be okay. Take the first step and watch what happens. Start this adventure and see how I'm going to bless you and take care of you and provide for you. I will make your name great. You know what's really interesting? Right next to that, I put a little mark with my pencil. I wrote 11.4, a reference to Genesis 11, chapter 11, verse 4 where it's the story of the Tower of Babel, and it says the people said, come, let us build ourselves a city, a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. In trying to make a name for themselves, they're going against the will of God, rebellion. I don't want to preach a sermon on chapter 11. By the way, I have a blog post on that. I'll share a link later on our Facebook page for the Cloverdale Church. But so you, you can study that if you want. But so there's several things going wrong, but the, the main motivator was they wanted to make a name for themselves. And that's not the way that it works. You see, the way that it works is you go in an adventure for God, and God makes your name great. Not for yourself, but because of what you're doing for others. You know, we've had a few memorial services here in our church recently. And it's amazing to come to those. And they're available on our live stream, so you can go back and take a look at them. And then you hear about people and the great things that they did. And you're going to find out that the majority, if not all of those things, were always selfless acts for the benefit of somebody else. You make a name for yourself by going with God on this adventure and putting yourself out there for the benefit of somebody else. That's what our world needs. That's what our community needs. That's what our church should be all about. And it's already happening. And I just want to encourage that and fan that flame so that more of us can experience this adventure that God is calling us to. Not because it's easy, but because it's worthwhile. And if you're going to have a great name, let it be because of your selfless willingness to help others who are in need. Because look at what God says. Not only is he going to make Abraham's name great, he says, you shall be. Okay, after that, you shall be a great nation. You also be. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. We are not meant to just receive blessings. We are meant to be blessings. But you know how that happens? You got to start the adventure. As you start the adventure, as you put yourself out there, God will then bless you so that you can bless others. When you find yourself in a situation, says, Lord, I want to help these people, but I can't. God says, perfect, here's what you need. I've had this happen in my life, and I've gotten to know some of you here, and we've got to talking, and you shared with me how God has done that in your life. When you, you started something, you're like, Lord, I don't know how this is going to turn out, and then suddenly, unexpected blessing shows up, and things get better and things continue to move forward i believe if your ministry if your adventure is something that's coming from god and if you're being faithful to what god called you to do god will provide the means for it to succeed you know one example of that i think of our adventist schools i'm so glad to have students here from gsa and we have our our own school here also uh, beavis or boise valley adventist school um, getting the, all the names and the initials right, in Gem State uh, Adventist School. And it's amazing because you see, as our schools do what God has called them to do, enrollment goes up and donations come in. So I think that as a church too, as, as we continue to do what God's calling us to do, you know what happens? God starts to send people our way. 
people who are seeking God and praying to him. He says, oh, I know where to send you. Because when you go there, the people who are there, that's all of us, will point you to me. Our job is just to point people to Jesus. And the better that we do that, the more he'll send us people. And the more he will provide. And it's just like Abraham here. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make you a blessing. You're not supposed to keep the blessings to yourself. You're supposed to be a blessing for others. And let me tell you, as the ministries, and I use, you know, I mentioned card ministries specifically. We have pet ministries. We have men's ministries and women's ministries and all kinds of different ministries and the children's ministries. As you are doing what God has called you to do, God will continue to provide the funding and the support and the volunteers. And let me tell you, God wants to use you if you're listening to me right now. If you're online, listening on YouTube or Facebook, if you're listening to the audio recording later as a podcast, God wants to use you. If you are not willing, the work will still be accomplished but you will have missed out on the adventure of a lifetime. So don't miss out. Get involved. But let's continue with the story. There's more lessons here. Verse 3, this amazing thing is you partner with God. Look at what God does. God says, I will bless those who bless you, which means as you go about your mission and people help you, they donate, they volunteer, they they join in, they, they partner with you in your ministry, they receive a blessing too. As you bless others, and as people bless you, they receive a blessing. But let me tell you, it's not always going to be that way. There's going to be people. You're going to run into people. They're going to try to trip you up. There's going to be people who are going to be made uncomfortable with your success, and they're going to want to get in your way. There's people who are going to be used by the enemy not to allow the work that God is doing in your life and through you in this community to go on, and things are going to be tough. But God also takes care of that. He says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. Your enemies, God will take care of it. You don't have to worry about it. I have seen more than once people trying to get ahead in life by taking advantage of others, by being dishonest, by sharing half-truths, by doing all kinds of schemes and things. And let me tell you, those people don't prosper. They don't find joy in their lives. And it's, it's right there in the text. I think that this was very specific to Abraham, but this also reveals to us God's character and how he works in general. There was a specific call to Abraham, but I believe that God has a similar call to all of us. He is willing to do this. Abraham had a specific role, but all of us have a role to play in God's, to play in God's plan for the salvation of this world. More specifically, he says to Abraham, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And it's a reference to the birth of Jesus who would eventually come down the road. So the journey, the adventure, it's not just about you. It's about your neighbors, your co-workers, your classmates. Not only that, it's about generations to come. But you can say, I don't have any children, or I'm not even married, or I'm, I'm really young. Don't worry. As you join God now, it will bless people who are not even born yet because of your willingness to go on this adventure. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's worth it. So let's continue with the story because we're, we're going to pick up the pace here because I want to be able to cover this story to the best of my ability. Verse 4 says, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. So God spoke and he followed. He departed and Lot went with him. And Abraham was how old? 75. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. But 75 to be starting on an adventure? Like now you want me to leave behind? my social security, now you want me to start something new? No, it's when God called, right? I don't think you have to wait to be 75, but I think that this also shows that there is no such thing as too old for what God has in store for you. By the way, I saw an email this morning. I shouldn't have been checking my email, but I was looking for another piece of information. I saw there was this new email from one of the pastors in our conference, so I looked it up. And there is this, this project with It Is Written where they send interest in a certain zip code area to different churches to, you know, people who are interested in Bible studies. And, and they are calling for volunteers. And the idea is just that they want a real human being to reply to the interest as opposed to an automated message. Someone to say, hey, how are you? 
You know, um, I'm here in case you have any questions, just here to encourage you. And a lot of this thing is done by mail, through email, uh, voicemail, text messages, emails, you know. It's very little of it is actual personal contact, even though there are some people who are open to that. Many are a little bit careful because of COVID. And I was thinking, would Cloverdale be interested in being a part of this? Thank you. Because let me tell you, Pastor and Jason and I couldn't possibly answer to all of these requests. But if you're interested, and this is something I think you need like a phone and access to the internet, and you can be a human person encouraging someone who's interested in Bible studies. You don't even have to give them all the answers. You don't have to give them the study. You just have to be that person encouraging them as they take the studies online. So I'll have more information for that. Keep an eye open and thank you for the yes. But I'm telling you, God is needing, just, he says the harvest is plentiful. The issue is that the laborers are few. And if we are willing, there's an adventure waiting for us. Something that will challenge us and excite us and then cause good to happen in the lives of others around us. Quick story before, uh, I promise we're going we're gonna to get to it. I got to baptize a lady before moving here back in Georgia. And she's just the, the sweetest lady. And I think she was in her 70s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not sure if she was 75, but in her 70s. Listen to her, and she told me her story. You know when she first found out about God? She was a teenager. She was 14, I believe. A friend of hers was Pentecostal, and there was a revival at her church. She invited her. She went with her. She went there for it was a week of revival. At the end, the pastor made an appeal for baptism. She felt impressed. She went and got baptized. When she got baptized, she felt something. She was lighter, and there was just this joy in her heart. But she had no idea about sin and Jesus and these different things. She didn't really understand a lot that was going on. So she was curious to learn more about the Bible. And she found a magazine, and she was flipping through. And then there was a thing for Bible studies through correspondence. And she started. Those Bible studies were through one of our Adventist ministries. She found out about Jesus, about the second coming, about the sanctuary, about prophecy, all of these things. But her parents never went to church. And for years, she moved from church to church to church to church. In her 70s, she's listening to the radio. She came across an Adventist radio station. She heard about the Sabbath. She heard about prophecies. And it reminded her of the Bible study she had when she was a child. I had the privilege of baptizing her. But she was really baptized because of someone who was giving her Bible studies through correspondence. You never know how long it's going to take or what journey, but if you're willing to be a part of that, God is going to use you to touch a life for eternity. The question is, are you willing to go on this adventure? It's going to take time. It's going to take effort. We're going to have a training. It's going to be available through Zoom for this specific thing. Um, so if you're interested, we want to equip you, but you have to be committed. You have to be willing to go on this adventure. For the benefit of somebody else. Not because you have so much extra time in your life, but because you're open to a challenge, to an adventure, to something that's worthwhile. You know, Abraham starts this journey. In verse 7, it says, the Lord appeared to him. And now God adds on to the blessings, right? He had promised to make him a great nation. He had promised him, you know, to bless him and make him a blessing. But verse 7, there's more details. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your descendants... I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. So as he goes on the journey, God reveals to him more things. By the way, this land is going to belong to your descendants. Meaning, your choices right now about serving God and being faithful to God will benefit people to come behind you. And by the way, we're only here standing on this renewed and beautiful sanctuary because generations before us worked so hard to have this place built because people have been volunteering and sacrificing and working hard for generations for us to be here. And then we get to contribute for the next generations that will come after us. And as you go on this adventure, God opens your eyes and reveals more to you. And it's interesting that Abraham builds an altar because an altar is where what takes place? Sacrifice. But Abraham is not reluctant. He's excited about the sacrifice because God is with him. And God is doing things for him. And he's more than happy to sacrifice because it's worthwhile. It's not comfortable. It's not easy. It's 
the right thing. It's worth it. So Abraham is gladly building these altars. He's making sacrifice. And as he's going around, this also stays as a witness for generations to come, for people to come after him. It's so important for us to share what God is doing in our lives so that those who are coming after us, those who are around us, can be aware of the blessings, raising up these pillars, making these sacrifices so that people know and we ourselves find out, I must really believe this because I'm putting all this effort into it. I must really believe this because I'm putting all this time into it. I must really believe this because I'm trying to learn something completely new out of my comfort zone. I guess I really believe in God. And you will, your faith will grow because your actions are following what you claim to believe. But we're going to go into a challenge. Verse 10 in the story of Genesis chapter 12 says, Now there was a what? A famine in the land. Now let me ask you, if, if Abraham is doing God's will and he's going on an adventure, he's being faithful to God, shouldn't God prevent the famine from coming? Isn't the famine perhaps a sign that God is not with Abraham or that Abraham made a mistake or maybe God gave up and changed his mind about Abraham? Do we feel that way? We take a step, we start a ministry, people signed up or you sign up for the ministry and then it's like, why is this so hard? Why is it so difficult? Why isn't everybody helping me? Why am I struggling with this? And maybe you think, well, maybe this wasn't God after all. Maybe I'm all by myself. And Abraham begins to wonder this. Well, I believe he does because of what he does next. It says, and Abraham went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. You see, Abraham went to the land of Canaan because God called him there. But he left because it was hard. God never told him to go to Egypt. God never told him to leave the land of Canaan. But maybe Abraham felt alone forgotten started to doubt is this really from god is this and then he goes to the land of egypt now here's the thing if you start to doubt to doubt and to question god and you think well if god can't protect me from the famine are there other things that god is unable to protect me from and you start to question god and abraham begins to question god because look at verse 11 and it came to pass when he was close to entering egypt he turns to his wife sarah and he says, indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance. And she goes, oh, Abraham, stop it. <laughs> now, as, as they're going to this land, he's just declaring how beautiful his wife is. And then there's verse 12. Therefore, it will happen when the Egyptians see you that they will say, that's his wife, and they will kill me. And they will let you live. It's like, Abraham, what, what are you talking about? Like, what kind of comment is this? And he keeps going, wait, I'm not done. Please, say that you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that I may live because of you. And after this comment, you know why it took so long for Abraham to have children. Because after this, Sarah was like, mm-mm. Like, like, what are you doing? That what, what I would expect Abraham to say is like, you know, you're a beautiful woman, and let me tell you, the Pharaoh and all of his armies could not separate me from you. I will die fighting for your love. I will never let you go. But the hero of the story is saying, honey, you're so beautiful. I love you. Please lie about our marriage so that nobody kills me. <laughs> really, Abraham, is this... And by the way, if I was writing the Bible, right, like, oh, this is the story of one of the founding fathers of our faith, I'm going to skip this part, you know, <laughs> just, just not put it in there. Kind of embarrassing. And another interesting thing, you know, we see in verse 4 that Abraham was um, 75 years old. I put a little note there in the margin in my Bible. I wrote 1717 because this is when we find out that Abraham is 100. He says, I'm 100 years old, and my wife is 90. So we see there is roughly 10 years there of difference. So Sarah's going to be in her 60s, and he's concerned about how beautiful she is. And for me, this just says there's a b different approach to, to beauty. And I love this idea that, you know, that we, we reach our peak in our 60s, and not, you know, when you're really young, but rather like this. She, she has, you know, she, this, she's, this is a beautiful woman. And, the, you know, the fresh air and the exercise has been good to her. And they're, they're out there. And the Egyptians, they see her. And it turns out Abraham was, you know, apparently he wasn't exaggerating. 
Verse 14, it was when Abraham came into Egypt that the Egyptians saw the woman, that she was very beautiful. And the princes of Pharaoh saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. Now the interesting thing is verse 16. And the Pharaoh treated Abraham well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and male donkeys and female uh, and male donkeys and male and female servants and male and female donkeys and camels. Imagine Sarah. Not only is she taken now to the house of Pharaoh, her husband is getting rich from this thing. Man, she, she's probably saying Abraham better than that. Uh, anyway, so, so this is happening, and I wonder if it doesn't make Abraham feel like he made the right choice. Sure, I lied a little bit, but I got rich from it. Sure, I mean, God made a promise, but it was to me, right? I mean, that doesn't include my spouse, does it? Does God plan for my life include my spouse, my family? Does God value marriage? Does God value women? Because you might read this story and be like, look, you know, God doesn't care about Abraham's marriage. God doesn't care about Abraham's wife. And except that it's not God doing these things, it's Abraham. Abraham is a man of his time. And Abraham seems to put more value in self-preservation than on his marriage or on his wife. The amazing thing is verse 17. I have this underlined and circled in my Bible. And, and I love, if you ever get a chance, go through Genesis or whatever you're reading in the Bible and circle every time you see this phrase, but the Lord. I love that. Because it means change is about to take place. God, the God of the Bible, is not a God that sits back and watches things unfold. The God of the Bible is a God who gets involved. Abraham is messing up. Abraham is being disobedient. Abraham is doing his own thing. Abraham is lying. Abraham is messing up the plan. God, how is God going to make him a great nation if he doesn't have a wife? God steps in. Abraham may not value his marriage as much as he should, but God does. Maybe Abraham doesn't value his spouse as much as he should, but God does. And God steps into history, into time, and makes a difference to save Abraham's marriage, to protect Abraham's wife, to provide for Abraham in his disobedience. God still steps in. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh, verse 17, in his house with plagues because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. God plagued the greatest nation of that part of the ancient world because of a woman whose husband was too coward to stand up for her. God steps in and defends her honor and protects her from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, what is this that you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Isn't this embarrassing? Here we have this man of faith getting a lecture from a pagan king about being dishonest and about the value of marriage. When we mess up and God has to use somebody else to tell us, but aren't you a Christian? Shouldn't you know better? How embarrassing. Let's try to avoid that in our lives. You know, just, so, so the, the, the best thing is, Verse 19, let me just finish this. Why did you say she's my sister? I might have taken her as my wife, but he didn't. Now, therefore, here is your wife. Take her and go on your way. So Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, him and his wife, and all that he had. He was deported from Egypt. God sent him out back to the promised land to continue the adventure. I'm going to stop here because of time. But I think there's a few lessons that we can take from this, and hopefully I didn't write too much, too small. But I believe that God calls all of us to trust Him and to step out of our comfort zone for the sake of the mission, for the sake of service, for the sake of the benefit of somebody else. There is a specific story, but I find this principle at play. And join us next week for part two. You're going to see that there's certain principles here that apply beyond the story of Abraham. I believe that God blesses us as we faithfully follow his calling. And then he turns us into a blessing for others. He gives us so that we can give to others. So the blessings come so that they may be spread out and those around us may be blessed. I believe the adventure will involve hardships and challenges. We're going to face the equivalent of a famine. 
And then the question becomes, do I abandon the ministry? Do I go back to doing nothing? Do I, or do you pivot and turn and look for new ways? There are, I understand there are ministries that because of COVID and the changes and things, it's just really hard to do right now. What changes can we make? How can I continue to serve God, but in a different way, but not giving up? Does that make sense? It's okay to change. Like I said, you know, we have to be flexible. God is going to guide us in this. The idea is just don't quit. Don't give up. And I believe that God is merciful and patient with us when we are scared. And when we mess up, he does not give up on us. So there is a call to adventure. God promised to be with us. And also the promise that he will not give up on us. So here is the practical application. Here is my call to action. If you have paper in your hand, if not, take out your phones and the note aspect and, and make a note of this. And you can update this and change this. But do this right now. If you're watching online, I invite you to do this as well. I want you to answer this for yourself. Write it down. I believe that God, God is calling me to write it in. And you can, you know, make this better as, as time goes on. But write something down right now. What is it that God's calling you to do? Even if it's just a fuzzy notion right now, and you're going to make it clear later on. What is it that God's calling you to do? Write it down. And here's this next part, and I need you to take this challenge this week. The first step I'll take in that direction this week is, and this could be to contact someone, to send an email, to sit down and figure out the plan. What are you going to do this week? Maybe you signed up for some ministries. Contact the ministry leader. Hey, I'm here. Can we get together? What's the plan? Let's work on this together. But do something and do it this week. Don't let it go by because you're too busy. I know. And, and, and I don't want you to miss this opportunity. Right now is my chance to make you uncomfortable. Right now is my chance to, you know, just make this decision. What is it that God's calling you to do? Write it down. What are you going to do this week as a step towards that? Write it down. And if you're willing to give this a try, to embark on this adventure with God, and you would like to pray about it, I invite you to stand so that we can pray about God's plan for our lives, for our church, so that we can impact our communities for Him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we recognize that if we only show up for church, sit down, get up, and go home, we're missing out. You have more for us. Lord, there are people who are hurting. There are people who are crying out to you, seeking you. And Lord, we would love to be a part of what you're doing to save those. Lord, there are people who are hurting. And you have equipped us, each one of us, with different gifts. Lord, show us, reveal to us, how can we use the gifts you have given us to help alleviate the suffering of someone. Father, thank you for calling each and every one of us to an adventure. Lord, we're standing because we're willing. We're willing to do this. But we need your help. We need your guidance. We need your blessings. We need your wisdom. So I pray, Father, that just like you did for Abraham, you would do for us. Those of us who are standing, those who are listening, watching online, Father, I pray that you would bless us and make us a blessing for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I hope you are blessed by today's message. If you have any questions or would like someone to pray with you or for you, please feel free to contact us. May God bless you and keep you till we meet again.